Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. It was a hot day today. I am glad to be inside at my desk in the wonderful air conditioning. It was 97 degrees and I worked in the sun all day. So I'm just happy to be in here regardless of what kind of game we're going to see. I'm going to have a good time. But this should be a fairly decent game. Maybe a little bit slower pace. This is 5 versus 5 Canis with the average Joe's ranking range. We've got 800 through 1400 so i wouldn't expect it to be bam 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 all the way through but grab a drink sit back relax and we will enjoy this let's go ahead and introduce the teams and we will roll right along into this game one more thing i neglected to mention in the last cast down in the description if you look there is a poll it is between four different games i'm looking to start a new game and uh, basically giving you guys the choice of which game it's going to be. There's links down there for descriptions of the games and then that poll. So go ahead and head on down there. I'm going to be taking the results of that and starting next week, picking up a new game and just seeing what I can learn about it. You guys will get to learn it with me. All right. On the northern side, we have Chimpsky taking UEF. He's going first air, which is kind of an odd choice. Zegota he is taking Aeon in the air slot. Sir Sharpshooter with Cybern on the left side. We've got Undertaker taking Seraphim and Magan with Seraphim as well. So all four factions represented. On the southern side, we've got Robert C. with UEF, another UEF for Willard Queen. We've got two Aeons for Mackie and Shelvy. And a Cybern for Tenshi. So no Seraphim on the south side, but the other three are there. All right, let's go ahead and zip into this game. I'm going to bump the speed up on this one just a little bit. I previewed the first couple of minutes. It does turn out pretty well, but there's a little bit of a stall here right at the beginning of the game. It's kind of typical of this rank range. Um, any higher than this, and you see some really aggressive expansion and good game practices, but I would not label this a facepalm video by any means. It's just a little bit lower average skill level. So I hope these guys do watch this cast. I'm going to try to point out as much as I can that they can do differently or do better, and maybe it'll help them improve. All right, let's see what we got going on here. We've got Mantis headed down towards the south, accompanied by a mole it's going to stall right here, it looks like. Those are probably intended to go after Expansioneers. One thing that I do mention every once in a while is that if you're building attack units and a scout and you have a long distance to travel, you need to build your tanks first and then the scout because the scout will catch up to the tanks along the way, whereas the scout running out ahead of the tanks really doesn't do you that much good. Air Factory first. Ah, there we go. There's a bomber coming out. Not first bomber, but relatively early. And then we also have a bomber out for Zegota. Um, that is going to head south, probably after engineers. As many engineers as you can possibly kill. Again, two engineers and your bomber's worth it. Any less than that, and it was a failure. But look at here. Nice little clumped up bunch of engineers. It's almost like he knew that bomber was coming, and he's like, hey, I'm going to give you a pretty target. Bam! Five engineers. Well done, Gota. And looping back around. Going to get off another bomb for three, four more. Nope, that was three. That is the crash site. So a total of seven engineers <laughs> with that bomber. Nicely done. We've got an engineer there. Nothing on the left side. And if he can kill one more, he will be good to go. Heading down towards the south. And he's going to miss a pair. Microed out of the way. And crashed. So a nice little bit of early aggression on the northern side. Then on the right hand, we've got Tenshi sending a Mantis and a scout up north. That is going to be intercepted by Magan with the ACU. Anytime you send a tank like that, I would always send it out to this side. A lot of times the ACU from this area will come down in this direction. And sometimes you can get around the back of them if you send some tanks up through this plateau. Doesn't always work, but to me it seems like it has a better chance of working than sending it straight through here. If you do send it through here, I would skirt this edge very, very hard. Place a whole bunch of move orders in a row right where you want them. All right, bomber coming in, going to hit, I think that was an engineer right there, and flares coming in to clean up the mass extractor. Do not want to build too many flares. We got five down here. It'd be cool if he was going after a ghetto gunship, but as far as uh, assault bots, not assault bots, um, yeah, light assault bots versus tanks, yeah, yeah, that doesn't work. 
<laughs> they just have too little health. And they're one shot killed by the ACU. So, going to do a teensy tiny little bit of damage, but not anything worthy of mention. And going to run straight back. I believe these are cloaked Stellans. Stellans. Um, let me see here. Possibly. They may just not have been noticed yet. The Selens do have that cool little ability where if they sit still for an extended period of time, they cloak. Um, so you can see them on radar, but not, or with Omni, but not with any normal vision. It must be cloak and stealth then. I believe it is. All right. Up here on the right-hand side, we finally got the right idea. Tenshi is hitting the right flank with Mantis. It's going to kill off a mass extractor there. Actually, that's a pair of Mantis for each mass extractor. Nice run by there. Going to wipe out that entire eco, and then if he swings all of these Mantis around the back side, he will be able to get back into the base. Um, this is a bad idea right here. Walking your ASCU all the way back for something you have very little chance of intercepting that was the right choice building a point defense right in the choke there it's going to take both mantis out those are going to have to move back around to try to find something else to kill and that's the end of that down on the left side we've got white moving forward robert c is pushing up just a little bit to hit this expansion but we do have some troop movement from sharpshooter he is going to back up his ally who is getting a gun upgrade that is going to be dangerous. We've got two people with a lot of mobile units far outstripping the production of the two opponents versus them. And we're going to have a gun upgraded ACU right there. This is not such a good thing. Do not want to lay this many stationary point defense in one area, especially T1, because all it takes is a handful of T1 artillery and those are all going to get wasted. I say stationary point defense. That is kind of repetitively redundant, but I'm just emphasizing the point that they can't move. So I would say it's an emphatic repetitive redundancy. We've got a few land factories down here for front end production. ACU did loop around the back side, so it is going to move up this way. And a faulty troop movement is going to put the tanks out of place. This is where the Mantis are at their strongest because they're very, very fast. Um, they are... If you miss the turn with the tanks, they are going to outrun every unit that you've got and they are going to get back and do the nasty with all of your production like we see here. And that is bad because that is a 90% T2 factory. Oh my goodness. That's going to be hard loss. No, no, no. Stay there and kill it. Stay there and kill it. It, it got the health boost, but nah. I don't think they would have succeeded anyway. Oh well, that was almost a good thing. Tenchi's trying, he's getting in there, but it's just not meant to be. So we are going to see some Ilshivas from Magan. That's going to be the strongest T2 unit to hit this battlefield. And you need to manipulate that strength as long as you possibly can. Bump up your production, stop the T1, build huge packs of Ilshivas, and throw some mobile flak in there, and you can pretty much roll over, roll over anything that you want to. I'm not sure what I was trying to say there. Perhaps it is heat stroke. Who knows? I do know I'd probably drink a gallon and a half or so of water today. I still don't think it was enough. It was hot. All right, Chimpsky is rolling south. He's got that gun upgrade on his commander, and he has the backy units of Sir Sharpshooter, but they're not currently with his ACU. He is kind of going at it alone. He's got his flak. He's got his shield. What else do you need? There's T2 point defense in the way, though. Triad's going down. That is going to... Put a little damper on the party. I don't know that I would have gone into full retreat. But, yeah, triads make it a little bit hard to push with that gun com unless you got some units to back it up. And he does. Here comes the rest of the T2. We've got a pillar and some flapjacks moving in. Now, what would be really good here is to see a combined push from sharpshooter and and Chimpsky. If Sharpshooter does nothing but spam Vipers for all he's worth and Chimpsky can push up with that gun upgrade, they could easily obliterate this fire base and everything around here and just push straight on through to the south side. I don't know if we're going to see that kind of coordination, but uh, it would be nice to. Got some T1 bombers coming in. Probably there for the purpose of the Kamikaze. 
going to hurl them against all of these units and try to deal as much area damage as he can or maybe deplete some of those shields. And ACU retreating once again. All right, on the right-hand side, let's see what we got going on here. We have a stealth base. Not sure what the point of that is. Maybe he'll build uh, TML at some point or something. And then we have four, two TAC missile launchers, sorry. And TAC defense, flak, various and sundry other things. So it's gotten a teensy bit stationary on the right and center. Now with these, yeah, there we go. There's a fire. Hopefully it's heading for that T2 mass extractor. When you build TACs, the advantage of tax is surprise. So, when you're doing tax, you need to make sure that you're not mass stalling at all. If anything, you need to be positive mass so that you're building at maximum pace and you need to put off firing until you have two or three in the chamber of your single TML or maybe one or two each in these because the element of surprise is crucial. The longer you give them to respond with TMD, the less value you're going to get out of the mass that you spent on these. So if you have four in the chamber combined, you can hit four mass extractors in the home base right off the bat. And then as he's trying to put tack defense up, then you can start hitting his outlying mexes that he doesn't have centralized defense for. And you can see now he's pushed up his tack defense here. He's seen it. He is preventing any further incursions into his territory and this is a dangerously low health ACU. Oh, there's a vet. 16, 14, 9. Mantis bearing down on him. 5. Oh. And below 4. Got to dodge that artillery, my friend. He is. He is. Tanks moving up and I think he's out. He's good. And there's the veterancy, 28. That was very close. He he nearly didn't get out of that one. Yeah, I, I don't think... I think you can walk into the water and in the very, very center of the creek, your head does go underwater, like in these dark strips here. But it's not by very much. And I think if you ground fire T1 artillery from either shore onto the head of the ACU, it will kill it. I know TAC missiles hit ACU under the water. So basically, you've just got to bite the bullet and run. TAC missiles hitting the base back here. Apparently, he did not get the memo that there were TACs involved. We do have another TAC launcher down here. It's got two in the chamber. He needs to be launching as fast as he possibly can to knock out all that stuff. Again, you have to. Once you build it, abuse it. And then, honestly, once they build a bunch of TMD, you force them... Um, you have killed off some eco. Ooh, nice. T3 air at 15 minutes for both players. I think that was an attempted grab at air control, but it didn't quite go through. If you build the tack launchers, um, you kill the mass that you're going to kill, and then you force your opponent to waste mass because he's throwing down um, tack defense all over the place. I'm trying to find examples of this. We've got two over here. We've got one, two, over here, three. Anyway, as a team, it forces them to build uh, tack defense. And then once they have enough tack defense to stop your tacks, you simply reclaim your missile launchers. And you get 81% of your mass back. And yeah, they've pretty much been screwed on two different levels mass-wise. So it can be a very handy tool if you use it correctly, but I would not recommend just spamming tack launchers for no reason all over the place every game. We've got four attack launchers here. This is what I would consider a slight waste of mass. The entire enemy team knows that you have tack launchers. It's going to be very, very unlikely that you actually get an ACU snipe with something like that. And this is a magnet for aggression for the other team. There's no way that you're going to get your mass worth out of that. Now on the left hand side, I'm sure you guys have been watching. We've got all these flapjacks here in this ACU. This is a shield gun comm that is harassing that other side. That's actually a really cool shot right there. <laughs> Missiles raining down on the base. If these were vipers, if his teammate had helped him get vipers out there a little sooner before the shields were established and have the frankly overpowered vipers at his back that firebase would no longer be there and i say that kind of tongue-in-cheek i don't really think the vipers overpowered because cyber as a whole has such oh 
yeah, that's what I'm talking about. ACU's on the move. You don't want to try to attack missile and actively moving ACU when he's got all the combat presets or combat upgrades, excuse me. You can assume that he's going to be moving around. All right, Strat Bomber to the right. Doesn't look like he's going to be doing much with it, but it is there, so we'll have to keep an eye and see where he sends it. Blue is starting to push some mobile missile launchers as well to try and get something up that'll take care of this mess. Trying to see he has got a point defense there, getting an ACU upgrade. Not sure what that is. Possibly T3. But yeah. Honestly, I'm surprised this is a stalemate. This is only a stalemate because um, Sharpshooter is not really backing up his teammate. If he flooded this whole area with his units, they would easily be able to overtake that. And right now, center is just kind of sitting stagnant. Um, tank missile launch that is not going to get up there because it has two TMD. We do have a Sam out in front. I like that. Zagota has a good idea. He's pushing a single T3 engineer out. This building Sam's in a loop around the front, and that's going to greatly assist in air control. Anytime the opposing air player tries to project, this map is so small that uh, you're going to have a significant portion of the map cut off from air. You can see how big that is right there. These SAMs are going to be cutting well into the halfway mark on the map. So to even bring in ASF to protect his teammate here is going to require losing ASF to those stationary defenses. So that's actually a good move. I would say that's a really good mass investment on the part of Gota. On the right hand side, we do have some mobile missile launchers up on the hill. That's a cool spot right there. Unfortunately, the T1 artillery does have the arcing range to hit those. It's going to wipe them out, I think, in just a moment. It's having a hard time landing the damage reliably, but it is going to kill them. But not before it did a good little bit of damage to this spot down here. We have T3 mobile artillery. I may be wrong, but that may be the first T3 land to hit the field. I don't see any others. There's a T3 support factory. Ah, there we go. There's some units on that side. He's been building T3 land in the back, but not really anything um, aggressive. And there goes the Quantum Gateway. I'm sure he'll be making Rambo comms out of that. UEF Rambo comm is probably the only thing in the current game balance that I can genuinely say is broken other than the Seraphim Commander TAC missile. The UEF Rambo comm just has so much health for so little mass that it's just hard to kill and then it has reliably good damage. All right, here's a mistake that I see, building T2 point defense. You never, ever, ever, ever want to build a triad when you have units headed towards you. The triad does less damage, targets more slowly and has less of a fire rate than T1 point defense and it costs more mass. So the only advantage you get out of triads is the range. So if you're preemptively building point defense, then yes, triad is the go-to option. But if the units are already progressing towards you and you know that you're going to get swarmed, throw down T1 point defense. They're going to run right into it. It's going to lay down way more damage, just far more quickly than a triad is, and it's more likely to save you. I think we may have a dead commander here because there's a whole lot of T2 tanks in this mix and he is dropping rapidly. He's down to 1600 already. 13, 12, 1, and 6. Those rhinos are brutal. You need to overcharge, my friend. You have got to overcharge. That could have been a kill. The tanks are going to stop and try to knock out these triads, giving Willard the chance to get away. There we go. Here come the Loyalists from his teammate. Tenshi is going to be a good guy. A helper He's going to send over those units to force back the Rhinos. So we do have T3 land on a lot of fronts now. Um, Tenshi has it on the right-hand side in the form of Loyalists. We do have T3 mobile artillery for Orange. We've got a handful of Percivals for Robert C. And we do have T3 tanks over here for Magan. And that is... 
probably not going to do a whole lot because we do have some Oblivions down. There are enough Obliv Oblivions in this corner that they should be able to kill the T3 tanks before they can close range. So we're just going to have to see how this turns out. Hopefully they don't take too much unnecessary fire. Got a T1 push from this side. At the same time, that's going to waste a lot of fire of those T2 point defenses, so this combined push may actually succeed in doing something. Sharpshooter is going to retreat over there. And T1 bombers, ahoy. There is a trebuchet here that's trying to lay down some blanket damage on those units that are coming in. And the Oblivion's doing a pretty dang good job. As I've mentioned before, Oblivion's do very, very well versus the higher tier units. They kind of suck versus T1 because they have such a low fire rate, such high alpha damage. They tend to waste a bunch of shots and not kill very many units. But once you start getting into T2 and T3 units, that is where the damage is at. Strat Bomber's looping around in here. I think that was a bomb successfully landed on Robert C, but he does have the body shield just like his opponent does. But there's a Ravager creep coming up from the back, so yeah, Robert C is going to have to give way to Chomsky. Strat Bomber is going to come in, it's going to, yes, that's targeted on the ACU, but it is going to help break the shields down. And there's very little point defense left over here. Air engagement, I think the numbers favored Gray on the initial confrontation, but that was a bad, bad turn. Red is just going to wipe the floor with him micro-wise, come out with almost all of his ASF intact and nearly 100% of greys on the ground. So that's going to open up many an opportunity for a strap bomber to be rammed in there. Um, yep, there it is, right there in the factory. He knows it, he's going to build them, and he's going to try to use that strength to his best advantage while he has it. T1 bombers coming out here again for some blanket damage. This is why I hate point defense on most maps. You can see the terrain difficulty there. T2 point defense, just going to fire into the hill. Not going to accomplish anything much, and it's just basically there to die to this nice little formation of Suthanus, whatever. Seraphim have really weird names, which is probably going to die to the trebuchets as I'm mentioning it. So, yeah, that was a failed push. <laughs> Tenshi was able to deny that very, very well, and I did not mean to do that. Let's hit the enter key and plusy plus. Okay, Orange is now in pursuit of Robert C. Chimpsky is definitely rolling this. He's got all of his backup units moving in. He's destroying things as he goes. He's trying to push that commander as far back as he possibly can. And I think that is going to be the end of the left side. He is going to retreat. He's probably going to make it back to his base and do good things there. But for now, there is no defense left on the left side. Got four, five, six Percivals moving in. But a shielded comm with mobile shields is easily going to be able to overcharge those. No problem. Loyalist moving up on this front, and we got T2 point defense going down. Again, making that critical mistake when you're versus advancing units. You either need to overcharge them straight up, or you just need to build T1 point defense to try to force them back a little ways. Once they have to move back and start reevaluating, that's when you try to bring the range in. Gray's air production is actually really good. He's already got almost as many ASF as Red again. He's going to reach out, tap that strap bomber out. And there's the ping on the SACU. Also going to get the transport. Nicely done. Slipping in right behind Red. He's going to get out with a little bit of damage to his ASF, but overall pretty dang good. And kill both of those targets. So nicely done there. He does make up for his lack of micro skills with a good map awareness and responding to his teammates' requests, getting in there, getting out, getting the job done. Hey, you may not be an, a flashy air player, but honestly, I would rather have someone's on Settings or any team map with an air back. I would rather have someone who can play defensively and protect me from everything than have someone who's big and flashy and gets right out there and tries to overextend with combat units because that overextension can a lot of times put you behind on air and as long as you have someone solid who's eliminating the incoming threats you can win your side just by the merit of air control 
All right, Monkey Lord is moving up. We saw this, this was built way back in the base. It's taking its sweet time getting up to the front. We've got bouncers moving in. Those are gonna help provide a little bit of anti-air cover from such things as T2 bombers. Oh my goodness. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> a Percival, a couple of Percivals, and a Rambocom were able to take out Chimpsky. That is embarrassing, and it looks like we're going to have another death on the north side. Magan is going to go down to his Monkey Lord, or a Monkey Lord, rather. <laughs> na -na 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 Batman. Oh my goodness. Well, that was a brutal hit there. Um, team two, or the northern team rather, is now down two players. And they've got a monkey lord rolling up into the base. Not good, not good at all. Okay. Undertaker is trying to get some tax up here. Not entirely sure why unless he's going directly for an ACU snipe like this all right so the problem with that was Magan got trapped by all of his a his engineers around his ACU his ACU was not able to escape from that massive cluster so I, I think he would have had time to escape and probably been able to do something but he yeah got stuck that's why you don't sit your ACU in the middle of a vast swarm of engineers, kind of like Zagota is doing right now. Got Oblivion turrets going down. Maybe that'll be enough. Probably the Oblivions and a couple of overcharges will suffice to kill that. Also got some restores, and again, Red still has air control, although he's patrolling his ASF over the top of mobile SAMs. Goda is going to get down here, 6,000 health and 22,000 health with the veterancy. ACU is very exposed, but he is going to get the overcharge in if the Oblivion turrets are going to finish that off, and he's immediately going to spin around and start that Galactic Colossus, because you know once you see one Monkey Lord, there is inevitably going to be another. Restore is going to turn around and try to kill off these mobile Sams, Gonna go into retreat. Not very mass efficient doing this, but hey, I guess it'll eventually get there. Interestingly enough, mobile flak is actually more mass effective versus gunships than T3 mobile SAMs. But the mobile SAMs do a decently good job of knocking down strat bombers. So it's kind of two sides of the coin there. You gotta decide which one you want. Honestly, a mix, probably two flak and one um, T3. Sam is a good idea because then you can deal with most threats accordingly. All right, Robert C's in the back here throwing down some power. He is spamming the ever living daylights out of these Rambo comms. Those are moving up towards the front, accompanied by some Percivals and mobile shields. That is going to do a substantial amount of damage up there. Rambo comms are one of the most brutal tools in the arsenal of the UEF, even superior to the Percival. And it's kind of a scary thing. As I was saying earlier, they are definitely overpowered. We got T2 gunships coming in. Those are gonna lay down some damage on these commanders, try to knock them out, but there's that good old shield health standing in between those gunships and a kill. On the right-hand side, still fighting over air control. And again, we're seeing this bad turn from Mackie, he just cannot seem to get in there. Red is consistently slipping behind and winning with equal or inferior numbers. If you're going to micro at all, make sure that you do it well. If you can't micro, fly right up next to the ASF, press the stop button, and then just let the ASF do whatever they wanna do. That is honestly the best thing that you can do because the with the stop, it basically introduces a turn on a dime with your ASF. It's kind of hard to explain. You're going to have to experiment with the exact timing of it. But basically, you're flying in with your ASF towards each other. You mash the stop button and then just let your, let your ASF do whatever they want to do. 
and it's an automatic win unless you're versus someone with impeccable micro who is expecting it which is not a very easy thing to overcome even then so that was a very ambiguous modifier let's see on the southern side we've got a bit of a turtle situation going here we're building up infrastructure instead of being aggressive although we do have a nuke always nice to have a nuke plant that thing in a variety of locations and wreak all kinds of havoc and we've got a megalith going down mm, there's another monkey lord as well okay well, I think we do have nuke defense. I saw it. Yes, and it is loaded, so that nuke's not going to be able to do a whole lot unless they can snipe the nuke defense. When two players died right next to each other right there, I thought the game was going to be over. And honestly, it probably should have been because that would give the southern team an opportunity to just immediately throw something together to try to kill one more player while the team is lacking in defensive options and then once it's five versus two the case is hopeless but they kind of sat on it for a while and now red is biting into the reclaim over here he's throwing up a czar he's got out a gc and he is doing all kinds of damage on the entirety of the map he's got restores over here he's denied every kind of push on this side we've got a monkey lord out for um sharpshooter and now red is going to have three full-blown ecos and that is going to be a tough thing to beat all right so we got two t4s on the left side rambo comms are going to move north and try to deal with that and they may possibly be able to do it we're going to have to see exactly how good these things are and they're also backed up by some percivals and this is another thing that desperately needs to be fixed that tracking problem with the laser if you're walking back and forth that screws with the pathing on the laser and honestly to me that seems like a exploit that um, I, I would not appreciate you very much as a person if you're using that against me um, that is obviously a broken game mechanic and I, I don't really appreciate people who purposely kite back and forth to break the laser but whatever we'll stay friendly in this game those four um, SACUs because of the broken laser beam they're easily going to be able to kill off that GC with all four of them still alive you can see the amount of damage being laid in health on that shield 32,000 health over 40,000 health total and I think it's like 300 or 600 damage I can't remember and a good amount of area of effect on that gun all right one of those SACUs is going to go down to the restores this needs to be the primary target it's only got 7500 health and his shield is down but instead these restores are targeting the shield on that SACU could have killed this one by now and then that mini nuke would also help killing the shields of the other two but I don't think that is going to happen we got a monkey lord moving northward that's going to eat these T2 tanks with the long range guns. People do underestimate these long range guns. They actually pack a fairly good bit of damage and you can kite around with them and vet up your monkey lord from a pretty good distance by killing off T1 and T2 units. Restores moving in that's going to start laying into the very thin hide of that monkey lord not a whole lot of health to go around there so you need to do a bit of protecting asf gonna come in and i don't know what happened there oh just have to see how this turns out i think yes mackie is gonna win that because red turned tail but the gray asf are kind of hanging out in a bad spot you either gotta jump in and kill the restores or don't go at all because restores can kite asf with their superior range you don't want to kind of play around in the outside edge restores are going to move back just a little bit we've got a good amount of t3 over here you can see how good these trebuchets are at laying in blanket damage just doing horrendous amounts to this group of bricks i know the individual shots on the trebuchet do not do that much damage it is by far the lowest damage artillery but the area of effect is so big that the effective damage is quite high. 
You may only be doing a few hundred damage to each unit, but by the time you're damaging five or six units at the same shot, then you're up in the thousands of damage per hit. So always remember that when you're looking at units and calculating the DPS, but I would say that Seraphim actually has better artillery than Cybern does. And there's the death from four Rambo comms. Oh, no overcharge. Did that die in that push? I'm assuming that it did. Yes. <laughs> All right. I need to focus a little harder. But at least it was in the middle of the camera so you guys could see what's going on. Um, again, broken commanders. Although, that was a very fully upgraded ACU. That was a combat... Seraphim Commander, which is a force to be reckoned with, um, but without that overcharge, you just can't deal with this many Rambo comms. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the overcharge actually does damage through the overshield, but I may be wrong on that. Maybe it does dissipate some of the damage. Yeah, Commander was max upgraded, so that would be um, Nano Regen, which, which upgrades your health and your regen. And then both of the gun upgrades. The Seraphim secondary gun upgrade is actually a brutal tool. A lot of people underestimate it. It does. It, it is quite pricey. But um, if you do get it, it introduces very large AOE, and you're putting in like a thousand DPS on it. So you can actually, if you have the regen upgrades, you can wade through a fair bit of T3 and have enough damage to soak it up and the ACU with the help of overcharges does win versus monkey lords and Yathothas with a little bit of micro and then throw in a few mobile shields and you can easily kill a GC as well so Seraphim Commander is not a trite thing you don't want to play around with it this is an interesting thing right here we have a czar and restorers and that is going to push back these ASF. We do have two people going air on the southern team. So air control is not going to be with the north for very Strategic long. But this does detect. make for good area denial. All right. White's got a nuke. That probably means that green is loaded as well. Yes, he is. Actually, he's almost got two in the chamber. It's going to be a nuke to the left-hand side. And we got nuke defense up there. So it is five versus two. And I think we're about to see this game wind down because I don't see how the North can defend itself for very much longer. There's the bright glowing lights. And we've got a GC here. We've got T4 Rex on the outside edge, so those need to be cleaned up for extra mass. Monkey Lord moving to the south. It's going to be skirting around the outside edge of an opposing Monkey Lord. This one does have double the health, though, so it would win in a fight. But there are Rambo comms. Monkey Lord's going to skirt away from that. Megalith coming up from the south. Galactic Colossus over here. I like the Restores. I like the Czar. But when there's that many mobile Sams in the picture, this southern team is doing a very good job of matching the unit mix to the situation. We've got all this mobile anti-air moving in with the T4s. The Rambo comms, I just don't see any way that they're going to get out of it at this point. I think this is going to be the folding of the northern side. Restores biting into those Rambo comms and that Monkey Lord just a little bit. GC is online, throwing some extra build power on that. Gota is pulling 414 mass per tick, just an astronomical amount of mass income. He's throwing down another Galactic Colossus in the back and a third with a ton of engineers on the left-hand side. So he may actually be able to respond to this. And if he can, that could be a comeback for the Southern team. Oh, 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 oh. ASF coming in. Going to lose quite a few ASF, but that is going to be an overall air win. Zara is down. He's going to fold back in, take out those restores. That is air control to the south. So Galactic Colossus is online. Hero is going to engage. We got one versus the world. He is going to burn that Galactic Colossus. Gota just barely surviving. This Monkey Lord is down to the Galactic Colossus, Megalith, and Spider. GC moving in is going to lay into the Monkey Lord. Monkey Lord's going to go down. 
and moving on. Strategic launch detected. This could actually work. He's got the GCs coming up in the back. I think he's going to live for... Oh. Oh, no. Oh, the nuke defense is dead. Well, that's disappointing. Here comes the nuke. I had to see where exactly that impacts, but this is definitely going to end it. Strategic Incoming! Launch and the second nuke. Holy cow. Where are you, little missile? There you are. Boom! Everything is suddenly so shiny. And there's the ACU blast. All right, GG. Go to doing his best right up till the very end to hold that together. Megalith standing triumphantly over all of the wreckage in the battlefield. But yeah, it, well, no, I guess he couldn't have because that's a whole lot of Rambo comms over there. I was about to say, I. Uh, I'm on the fence. He may, repeat, may have been able to deny all of that land coming in. And if he were able to, he would have so much mass at his disposal that he would pretty much be able to build his way out of anything. And I would have been terrified to see what came rolling out of that base about three minutes later. But the nuke defense went down. There was only one nuke defense. And so that is going to be the end of that. No other discussion necessary. All right. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that game. I know it was good to sit down and cool off and just kind of chillax for a little while. I know that wasn't the most fast-paced thing ever. But, you know, sometimes you just need to sit back and learn a little bit and maybe, I don't know, take it down a peg. Not have to fill your time with everything being ramped up. All right. Do not forget to go to the survey below. Vote on the next game that I'm going to be picking up. And I hope you guys have an awesome rest of the day. I know that I will. As always, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next cast.